Hey, what's up, you guys? This is Chromatis here again for another invertebrate video. And uh, this video is going to be a care sheet on how to care for pretty much anything from the genus Hadrubus, uh, scorpion. So uh, these guys are a desert species. They like it mainly dry, except in the summer you can give them a little bit more humidity because it'll simulate the monsoons and uh, rains that come in Arizona and other parts of southern United States where they live. Uh, like Hadrubus spadix. This one is a Hadrubus arizonensis. It's about a, it's an adult. Uh, you've seen it in my Kelly Swift review. It's approximately four inches. Body length is probably like two inches. So uh, these guys are very cool, very diff uh, different and uh, interesting species. Um, I j uh, he's he's just looking for a place to hide. I just took off his rock over there, and the lights on him. So I'll put the rock on it in a second. I just don't want him to sting me while I'm doing it. So appearance, these guys uh, for Hedrus arizonensis have a darkish, uh, you know, I would say, I don't know how what the correct wording is for, but you know, the top part is very dark, their claws are yellow and the tail is yellow. The way you can differentiate a Hedrus spadix from a Hedrus arizonensis, as you can see in the front where his uh, clearest here I are, it's yellow, and if that's black, it's a heterous spadix, and this is a heterous arizonensis, so it's yellow, so you know it's that. Could be a heterous obscurus, too, I'm actually not sure, because they look very similar. And heterous pallidus, uh, it's actually heterous arizonensis pallidus, it's not a, a subspecies anymore, has a, a kind of blondish back and that, instead of darkish. So these guys are very cool. Uh, as far as temperament goes, they are, you know, they're, they're semi-aggressive. They're not really, I mean, this one I have is actually pretty defensive. Like, if I get my tongs, you probably see. He actually gets pretty angry when I, see that? He tries to sting my tongs. He's a pretty aggressive little guy, but, um, these guys, yeah, they, they're mainly aggressive, but they're not that bad. They're nervous, and if you take off their hide or try to attack them, usually they'll, try to run away like this guy's been doing, or, or they'll store, uh, hold their ground and try to sting at your tongs. Either way, they are pretty, they're mildly aggressive, but they're not, you know, extremely, you know, stingy like uh, Androctonus or Lyrius, you know, uh, those are the scary guys. So these guys get up to around five, six inches, I think. Uh, this one it might, might, one more malt might be uh, adulthood, actually it could be an adult now. It is a pretty big guy, but you can't see it from the camera. Uh, and uh, that's pretty much the appearance and temperament. Uh, housing. Its alts can live in a 10 gallon tank like I have now. And uh, babies can live in like a plastic deli cup or a very small critter keeper. But uh, this is appropriate housing. Unfortunately, many of the um, scorpions in the Hedrus genus that are in the hobby are wild caught. I mean, wild caught isn't bad, but it can affect your scorpion and how it does in uh, captivity. So, this one is, is wild caught, but it's actually grown very accustomed to its um, closure. So, that's very good. And it, this doesn't try to get out all the time, it's actually usually under its rock hiding. So, that's very good. Here it goes into that cactus. Uh, for substrate, you want these guys are big burrowing species. All they do is burrow. So what you're going to want to do is give them a lot of substrate, probably around at least five inches. And I have them on a mix of sand and cocoa fiber. Uh, that's probably a good mix to do. So, I mean, you could you could put them on. What you should do is that you should put uh, put in fine grain sand and then wet it down. He just went behind that cactus, and then wet it down. So it'll, it can allow it to dry, and that'll make really good burrowing sand. So they go in there, big, big, uh, big burrows, and they don't come out for a while. That's pretty much the way these guys roll. Uh, so cocoa fiber substrate is a good, good way to do it. I'd say about 70% uh, sand, 30% uh, cocoa fiber. You can do, you can mix it up a little bit, but that's what I'd say. So goes. I probably have a little, actually a little bit more cocoa fiber in here, but that's because. They give you a lot of a. Uh, here, let me take the rock off again. They give you a lot of cocoa fiber, and they don't give you a lot of sands at uh, the pet supply stores. Okay, so that's pretty much a uh, housing. That's fine. You could give them rocks and decorations and stuff for hides. It's not that bad. These guys aren't communal, by the way, so do not try to house more than one. <laughs> Most likely, you're gonna have you know a problem.
problems, cannibalism. Uh, for breeding, I have not bred this species, uh, but I actually have heard that breeding is kind of tough in, in captivity because babies have a lot of problems with molting issues because the conditions usually aren't dry enough or too humid and they eventually all die out. So I have uh, never tried this species, but uh, it's up to you if you want to try your hand at that. Um, I'd say for uh, venom, it's, it's uh, from what I hear, it's a lot like getting stung by a hornet. It's on a one to five scale, one being mild, five being around fatal. I'd say it's about a two. Probably a bit more potent than the Panzanus Imperator, the Emperor Scorpion. So it's actually not that bad. Not terrible. This this lamp I'm just having on, it's just a heat lamp, just for decoration and so you know showing. So this is this heat lamp isn't on all the time. Although during the winter seasons, you might want to have a heat lamp on it if you live in a cold and cold place environment or a heat pad or something. And you can monitor temperature with you know those type of things. You guys like to dig under rocks a lot too. Um, let's see. Uh, I mean, for diet, you can give them other invertebrates. I'd say for adults, two to four crickets a day. I mean, not a day, <laughs> a week. That's crazy. Yeah, two to four crickets a day is fine. Uh, you don't need to overfeed them. I, I kind of feel like I overfed this guy a little bit. He's getting kind of fat. So, I, don't, I actually don't know if this is a male or female. But uh, he is kind of getting fat. So, you don't have to feed him that much. But scorpions can go a long time without eating months. Uh, this guy is probably going to go into pre malt soon if he if he's not in adulthood yet because I've been feeding him a lot. So that's uh, that's pretty much it. That's all you need to. I mean, I'd say Hadrurus arizonensis. Oh, there he goes. He's digging. Hadrurus arizonensis is a very good uh, species for intermediate keepers. Here's the thing, and this is my number one rule of thumb for beginners, intermediates, experts, that kind of stuff. If you own uh, any uh, species in the genus Avicularia of tarantula, you're pretty much ready to be an intermediate keeper because Avicularia tarantulas are, they can be very fast and they're not always very docile and it kind of gets you adjusted to the quickness of, you know, larger, not a larger, but, uh, you know, if, if you ever had an encounter with an Androctonus australis or Lyris quis triastis, uh, the, the, the quickness of them so, once you've owned an Avicularia too, I'd say you're about ready to keep one of these guys, even a Pandanus Imperator. Even though I wouldn't recommend Pandanus Imperator to be a very good beginner species because they need very high humidity. And eventually I'll do a Kershi video on a Pandanus Imperator because that's one of the most uh, prized specimens in the hobby, as many people know. So, if I left out anything, I'll put it in the description. So, I want to thank you guys for watching, and uh, I'll do another Kershi video on Scolopendra polymorpha. Uh, bye.